Good afternoon, everyone. This is your girl, the one and only Coteria, and welcome back to my channel, My Opinion Blog. Okay, FYI, a lot of y'all have made, a lot of y'all may have read my community tab, and uh, with my last video I had posted, which I believe that's part four. Um, y'all know I'm still recovering. I'm still under the weather from a very bad sore throat and cold, you know, that I had since last Thursday or last Wednesday. And y'all know with me having like allergies and sinus issues, when I get sick, I feel like it takes a whole week and a half for me to fully recover. So I still am congested, still have a lot of mucus and stuff. And so, you know, when I do my audio voiceovers, you know what I'm saying? I have to kind of pause you know, kind of blow my nose, FYI, TMI too, you understand, and um, then come back to do my voiceover recording. So normally I kind of like edit, you know, that part of the audio out, but that night I remember it was so late and I was getting so, so sleepy. I thought I had cut the part, but I didn't. And so when I was, um, you know, basically doing my shorts, you know, because a lot of people don't like to watch a almost 28 minute video. So I do a lot of shorts for those who have a short attention span. I had caught, you know, where I had sneezed. You understand? So I was like, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. So I just wanted to give a little update regarding the community post because a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all may be confused because you didn't get a chance to see that um video. And it was up for some hours and it had like 800 views. So I don't know if people thought that was probably part of my regular um, you know, my it was part of, it was supposed to be part of the video, but it wasn't. I was supposed to edit when I had blew my um blew my nose. I was supposed to edit that little um, part out, but I didn't. I thought I did, but I was so sleeping at night. You know, I always make sure I go back. You know, I backtrack before I post any of my videos, okay? Anywho, let's go ahead and get into this whole debacle um, drama workplace at TGIF Fox Soul regarding the, the host, Amon Wiggins, Al Reynolds, and Claudia Jordan. So, I be on these YouTube streets. I watch a lot of content creators because we all talking about um, the same thing, probably about a good 30 or 40 of us. I've seen numerous of videos, even on TikTok. Okay. And like I said, I like to give people different perspectives. You understand? Because some people could break things down way better than I can. I'm more of a opinion giver and in my perception, perception giver. Like I said, this is not a news outlet channel. A lot of y'all may know. I just, you know, see what I see in the news and the headlines and I give my opinion about it. But no, I'm not the type of channel that's going to report on the you know, the, the breaking news, I don't do that. But anywho, um, I see that Claudia Jordan, you know, she's still doing her press run on certain smaller content creators channels. I don't know her angle in my last video. I mentioned that, but I see that she's mods. She's mods on these people channels. Now I'm assuming that she might have been following these people on and off for some times to the point that they, you know, she's been on a channel whenever they're so comfortable, they made her mod. So I've seen, you know, screenshots that's been kind of like um, coming up in my timeline on YouTube regarding some of uh, um, some information she's been dropping in the chat as her being a mod. I don't know what channel that they took this screenshot from, but like I said, it's just circulating on YouTube. And I'm going to read some things Claudia Jordan stated in that live. Again, I don't know the content creator who she's a mod for, but one thing I can see with my own two big eyes is that homegirl, she's definitely going to different um, content creators' channels, particularly lives, and she's kind of like dropping some little hints and clues about what's going on. So in one of the lives that she's a mod in, like I said, I don't know who live this was because I can't see uh, much of the chat, just that um, the comment. It stated that, um, well, she put in the chat that I call out today to try one last time to fix it, he ignored me, so fuck it. I'm going to read the next one that's been, you know, going around. She commented, I'm not sure if this was the same live or a different live. She put, Al was having side convos with Armand, trying to get me fired, and having side convos with me, trying to get Armand fired. Then we found out, um, and I guess squashed our beef. Al been miserable since we made up. Okay, so these are the two screenshots that are circulating, like I said, around YouTube reg regarding Claudia. She put this in someone's chat that, you know, she was a mod, you know, yeah, she was modding this person live and she dropped this in there. So 
So, like I said, Claudia is on a mission, it looks like, to um, paint this narrative about Al being the problem. Like I said, the whistleblower, you know, um, at TGIF. And basically, he's gunning to get Armand and Claudia fired. So, this is what she don't state. This is from her account. I don't think this is a troll account. I believe this is um, Claudia account. So, it looks like she just, exactly, she's trying to change the narrative. She's trying to paint a... Um, picture of Al being the problem. She's trying to say it ain't her and among witness, this is Al. Okay, so as I said it again, based on my opinion and my perception of all this, all three of them are messy, like I stated. Al been pillow talking to Armand Wiggins. Armand Wiggins been pillow, pillow talking to Al. Armand Wiggins and Claudia been pillow talking amongst each other about Al. So they all been talking about each other behind their back. But at some point, you understand, I believe that, you know, Al Reynolds probably already went to HR or to productions about Claudia way back when Funky Dineva was the host um, on the show. We're going to bring up Funky Dineva because, you know, this is his last time, I'm assuming, addressing this situation. So we're going to get into his life. And it wasn't long. But what I get that was I, what I get from Claudia and what she's trying to do and what she's attempting to do, like I said, is paint this really negative um, picture and this image of Al as him being the problem. You know what I'm saying? At the workplace, he's causing, you know what I'm saying, the riffraff. He's causing them to get chewed by production. But what is, what are Armand Williams and Claudia Jordan is doing to Al for him to be a whistleblower and for him to go to HR or to the productions about Armand Williams and Claudia Jordan? What was said behind the scenes? This is what I want to get into. You know, she's dropping, you know what I'm saying, information that she want us to hear about, Cla about, about sorry, about Al basically being two-faced you know he's talking behind their backs to other people but y'all doing the same thing too you understand like i said all three y'all are two-faced and all three y'all really don't like each other you just gotta kind of you know go along and get along and work besides each other but you can tell all three y'all don't like each other i also believe that y'all three is in, in competitions i don't know who makes the bigger salary but like i said it's it's crazy that you know all three y'all fake and phony flu gazy you know, behind each other back. So I'm not surprised, but I don't think that Al is running to HR or the production because of Claudia and Armand talking behind his back. It is, I think it's way more deeper than that. And like I said, if you're going to sit up there and, you know, drop little hints and gems, give us a little bit more we can go off on. Oh, give, give us a little bit more that we can go off of. Excuse me. You understand? So, like I said, you know, what I get from it, like I said, I can only go by what we seen, okay, live with Armand said. That right there was malicious, and like I said, it was very out of character. It was devious and disrespectful, if you, if you ask me. Okay, because like I said, if we're going to be equal and fair, he did not keep the birthday roast, you know, like he should have, like he should have. Like Al, when he did his birthday roast about Armand Wiggins, it was cute. It was lighthearted. It was not devious and vindictive. What Armand did, like I said, what he solely did, he, it was premeditated. He knew what he was doing, and it wasn't coming from a good place. You know, at the end, he had the nerve to double down the time about, oh, Al, I love you, and this is coming from a good place. Bullshit. He knew exactly what he said, and he knew what he was doing. But like I said, the only thing he didn't expect was a negative backlash. People making, you know, commentary and videos about it and, and, and coming down on him. He didn't expect that. Like I said, he don't think he's a hothead. He just, like I said, you know, act off of impulse. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's the type, he getting his feelings really, really quickly. Okay? So, like I said, I believe it's way more, it goes really deep within this TGIF whole debacle. And let's get into Funky Dineva. Because, like I said, Funky Dineva... Um, at the beginning of his life, and I'm glad he kind of did that because I guess he I guess he had like probably two or three thousand um, followers and viewers on his live because they thought he was going to say give us some juicy tea regarding this whole situation. He did not. I like how he addressed this in the beginning so he don't waste no one, you know, click view in their time. And he was just kind of like, look, I've seen over 800 videos about me. A lot of it was misleading. You know, it wasn't the information wasn't correct. He was just like, he had nothing to do with those people over there. He has been unemployed. You know what I'm saying? He has not worked for Fox Soul since December of 2023. That was the um, the month that his contract had ended. He didn't renew it. So he has nothing to do with TGIF, Fox Soul drama. Even though he got put into the drama, he got caught up 
by default. And when I say default, because he was on his live and, you know, Al Reynolds called and, you know, he picked up and he was trying to like quickly tell Al, hey, I'm on a live, but Al kind of went in and let us know, you know, no, no, you need to go watch it. Like, fuck, like, I don't give a fuck. You know, he said that before he can listen to Funky Dineva tell him, look, I'm on live. And so once he let Funky Dineva get a word in it, he said, oh, you on live. And that's when he ended the phone call. Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate here because, you know, this can go two ways. A lot of people feel like Funky Dineva was intentionally, you know what I'm saying? Um, he intentionally decided to pick up that phone call knowing he was on live. He could have ignored it. That's true. Funky Dineva could, could have ignored that call when Al, you know, was calling him on his live. Or he could have put the live on pause because you can, uh, what you call it, put the live. I think if I remember, I don't know if things have changed on YouTube, but you can, you know, pause the live. I'm not sure. I think streaming services, I mean, um, StreamYard services, you can pause the live. I'm not sure. If you do the live directly on YouTube, if you're able to pause, I think you can, but I could be wrong. Correct me. He could have paused the live and said, Al, I'm doing a live. I'll call you back. So I don't know. You know, this could have went both ways. A lot of people feel like, you know what? Funky Dineva was intentionally being messy to expose, you know, Al, you know what I'm saying? By picking up that phone call, you know, that's your opinion. Y'all can, you know, agree to disagree. You could think, you could think whatever you want to think, but I just feel like Funky Nadiva, you know, he probably thought it was something important as to why he picked up the phone call, okay? So that's how Funky Dineva, you know, got involved in this. But this this really has nothing to do with Funky Dineva. He's 100% and 1,000% correct. But he's being dragged in it because he picked up the phone call for Al. And again, if he went in and pick, picked up the phone call for Al, he might have never seen it because they quickly snatched, you know, the video down once the live ended. But anywho, so like I said, Funky Dine was like, look, I have nothing to do with these people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't work over there. But he did kind of, you know, put this out there, a little small snippet of uh, a lot of what's going on between Al, Armand, and Claudia. It goes deep. And it goes way back when he was a part of TGIF, when he was a host. He was saying that it's been a lot of grievances amongst the hosts. A lot of, you know, complaining, you know, a lot of kind of like pillow talking going on. So this is what he was kind of saying in so many words. Like this issue that's kind of boiling over, it's, it's already been happening, you know, way back when, while he was there. And that's, this is what caused him to kind of leave. He didn't want to like renew his contract. You know what I'm saying? He felt like it was a lot of, you know, I guess meetings, a lot of complaints amongst, the, you know, the co-hosts, people taking pictures of people houses and their cars they comparing salaries so i said wow this is really petty for like overly grown people to be acting like this like they in their early 20s is like just blasphemy if you ask me but this is what he was saying that was going on it was a lot of tension and like he said it had nothing to do with the production you know what i'm saying it had to do with the complaints that was coming from his co-host and i could just guess and this is my opinion i could be wrong and i think Without kind of, he didn't say it, but just, I'm going to say it. I believe this is from Claudia in. I think Claudia is the problem. In so many words, he didn't say her name, but you know, all roads lead to Claudia. Because after that, he was just like, you don't have to lie on me. He said, y'all can, y'all can really reach out to me. And he said, I will give y'all the information that he can, the information that he's allowed to give. He said, he'll, if you reach out to him, he'll get on the phone or email you and, and say, you can put my name on it. You can put my stamp, my stamp of approval on it, and I'll let them let you know that, hey, I said this. This is factual because it's coming from me. This is what he said to the viewers on his live. But he said a lot of the receipts and information is really out here. You just got to take your time and do some thorough research if you really is interested. But we all know, like I said, this stems from Claudia. I feel like Claudia is definitely pulling the strings with Armand Wiggins. And like I said, I believe she put a battery in his back, and she kind of using him. You know what I'm saying? Like a prop, like a stage prop, if you ask me. And that's just my per my perception, my opinion. And then remember, Armand Wiggins is, is a pick me. He's a go along to get along because he's a new guy. He want to fit in. He wants to make an everlasting impression. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I don't know if he's going to stay there, um, you know, before all this happened. I don't I didn't think he was going to renew his contract. I feel like after that, after the contract was over, he was going to be done because you could tell he missed female rap beef. He can't really be on his channel to produce these videos every day. So his number is totally, his numbers on his channel have totally plummeted. 
because he's not consistently on his channel. So in my opinion, I feel like he wasn't going to renew his contract. And child, like I said, what I said months ago is coming to pass. Child, there may not be no contract over the things that, you know, he said that should have not been aired and, and said. You know, you let out, like I said, behind the scenes, private company problems. You let it be known on air. And that was not supposed to happen. Again, that was not a roast. That was a workplace grievance. We can agree to disagree. Some people don't know how to distinguish between the difference. I do. Let me tell you something. When you roast and gag somebody, it's about their physical appearance. It has nothing. I mean, seeing somebody, oh my God, like this person is two-faced. Like, come on now. Come on, y'all. Let's let me too grown. That's not a fucking roast or gag. Oh my God, like Al Reynolds, he's talking behind his co-worker's back. How was that? <laughs> how was that like a, come on now. Like, it, it, it don't take a rocket science to kind of like, no, that was not a fucking joke. He was telling, like I said, private information. Oh, I was making our workplace, our workplace feel like it's a reality TV. Is that a rose? That's a statement. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I understand, you know, Armand got, you know, some diehard diabolical fans that support him. But let's be real. That was not no fucking like a rose or gag. I know how to roast and gag. Okay, when you roast and gag, you talk about somebody's image. You can talk about a lot of things on Amon. For one, th for one, his the, the veneers he got in his mouth stands out. That's a roast and a gag in itself. If you know how to roast and gag. But he never talked about our appearance at all. He talked about grievances. Again, let's go ahead and move on from this. But this is what Funky Daniva was saying. He also let it be clear that he is good friends with Al Reynolds. He said that he's friendly with Armand Wiggins. Now, when he said that, and it's, he wasn't being messy, he was being honest and transparent. And I like that. He was just saying friendly, meaning that when I see you, how you doing? Good day. See you later. Friendly. That's it. That means when I see you, I speak. How you doing? We, and we keep it. I go left, you go right. He said, well, Claudia, he has no issues. You understand? But that's just that. He didn't have much to say about Claudia, like, I don't fool with you. We're not friends. You know, I, I got no beef, no issue, no smoke. So that says a lot. He had nothing nice to say about Claudia. So that let me know. You remember back, you know, a couple of months ago, he had his issues with Claudia. And he was this close about Aaron. He was this close to airing her out. He said some things about her when he kind of departed from Fox Soul. So like I said, I believe Funky Dineva and Al Reynolds, you know what I'm saying, don't got the butt end of, you know, um, Claudia Jordan bullshit. She's definitely been, you know what I'm saying, pulling the strings behind the scene and doing like doing some little really shady underhand stuff among Tonky Dineva and Al. And I think Al was trying to, you know, keep his composure, remain professional, still trying to put a smile on his face. You know, he had to be fake and phony when it come down to Claudia, even though they were supposed to be friends in the Hollywood industry for some time. Just because you know somebody and you've seen somebody a couple of times on a red carpet, that doesn't mean y'all friends. I will just say associates. A lot of people love to throw this little friend word out here so loosely to get on my nerves. So we're going to say they was Hollywood associates. But I just think that, you know, I'll handle this with the utmost respect and utmost professionalism. And that's what he was supposed to do. I've been inside this, you know, media and television industry for some years. This is an older man. So I can see I can see why he's not, you know, out here trying to be messy and people chat. He's not making videos, responding to none of this. Because he's above this. Like I said, Al Reynolds is not going to mess up his Hollywood image. You know, for this, I want to say mediocre show. <laughs> he's not going to do it. You can tell how Al move. He is, you know, they call him a queen. I give them that. You know, Al is like one of those, you know, conceited, stuck up queens. You can see that by his personality. He's not going to get hood and gutter and ghetto and get on Armand level. He's not going to do that. And Armand kind of know that. Armand don't care about burning his image. You know, the little struggling connects that he might could have had, and like I said, mind you, we in Pride Month, this is not a good look to see two LGBTQ men in the same community kind of having a falling out or a workplace grievance. It's not good, okay? But I'll know this. This is why Al is not going to be out here like Armand and Claudia responding, trying to protect his image. He don't give a fuck. He knows how this goes. Remember, when you're a person that's, I, I look at Al as an influencer. Are we going to say, uh, um, a reality star, you know what I'm saying? A reality star, a reality influencer, however you want to say. I don't look at him as a celebrity. Some people may have, but I look at him as a as an influencer or a reality star. 
Okay, he's been in the, inside the industry for a long time, so I don't expect Al to do what Claudia and Armand is doing. Okay, he's going to keep himself, you know, he's just not going to do it because he knows how it's going to look on his end. And like I said, you know, he hosts the red carpet. He'd be at the war ceremonies. He's always doing um, real, like he have like little work with Bravo, E! News. So he's not going to mess that up just to get, you know, down and, you know, argue for what? You know what I'm saying? The show, if the show cancel, it's canceled. He got other little gigs that he's going to move on to. Armand don't. He'll be back, you know, trying to build up his channel momentum and Claudia will be trying to get her other gigs. And this is why you got to think before you act because, again, Armand Wiggers, you are not on the level of Claudia and um, Al Reynolds. These people get around in Hollywood. They know somebody that knows somebody. You don't. You still trying to work your way. But like I said, you're going to learn. Um, you're going to learn from this lesson. You're going to learn to think before you react. Like I said, we all seen what Al have done. I'm not excusing what Al have done. I don't think Al is perfect. I, like I said, I believe Al is very messy, but in the right way. He doing it in the right manner, which meaning he might talk behind. He might talk about you behind the scenes, behind your back. That's fine. As long as he's not, you know, bringing it to the workplace or doing it at the workplace. Okay, that's the, you. You everybody talk behind. Everybody talk behind everybody back. That's fine. But when you bring this to the workplace and you do this on live at the workplace, why? hundreds and thousands of people are watching this that's a big no no that's the difference this should have been done at the end of your contract if you was not going to renew your contract with fox soul or if they didn't want you back okay if they didn't offer you to extend your contract then you should have won on your youtube channel or my wicked show or your spaces or your station head then you should have dragged out for filth but to do it at a workplace this is this is this is not excusable this is not acceptable so that is the difference Yes, Al talks about you and Claudia behind your back to certain people, just like Jason Lee. When you burn his book and you expose him, Jason Lee didn't do what you did, Armand. He talked behind you. He talked about you behind your back to certain people, and to you know, or um, I'm sorry, it took Claudia. I mean, oh Lord, I said Claudia to um, Cardi B. You know what I'm saying? Or Rihanna and all the other people that he did with. Okay, he did. He did. He tried to blackball you behind your back. He didn't bring that on his show. That's why I say, like, you are very inexperienced and, you know, it shows. Jason Lee was not going to lose his Hollywood connects and his image over a blogger. You understand? He set you up for the okie doke, made, made, made you spiral and thought you, you did something because you got over a million views, but you still ain't do nothing. Again, so like I said, back to Claudia. Claudia, like I said, did a live, like, the day before yesterday, and it was really late because I was up. And this, it was around, I'll say, like, 1 or 2. And I know um, they say Claudia live in Austin, um, Texas, or Dallas, Texas. One of the two, Austin, Texas, or Dallas, Texas. And um, she was doing a live on her YouTube channel, which is called Life with Claudia Jordan. I don't know if you guys seen that live, but people, of course, were trying to ask her about Fox. So she didn't kind of want to, how can I say, talk about it and stuff. She was talking about the College Hill and BET and the war show and all this other stuff. But then she was trying to make it seem like she didn't know how to go live on YouTube. So, you know, Claudia's a whole fucking compulsive liar. She's a she's a, a mass manipulator. You know, she likes to really, like, gaslight the viewers and stuff. And she knows what she's doing. You don't know how to go live on YouTube, but you're actually, you know, you're live on YouTube. I'm not sure if this is a pre-recorded video. I could be wrong. It looked like it was a lie. But she plays stupid and she, you know, she's very well. She's a smart, older woman. But she plays stupid, I guess, to pander to the audience or whatnot. But, um, yeah, Claudia is, is very, like I said, conniving and she's sneaky. Like I see what she's doing when she's going to these um, other smaller content creators platform and she's dropping little receipts to make Al paint him as, the, you know, the villain, the bad person. When it's not only just Al, it's all three of them. You know what I'm saying? All three of them in the hot seat. But I just feel like when it comes down to G TGIF, the workplace, Al is going to be professional. He's not going to get out of character like Armand Wiggins and also Claudia. She's not going to break character while she's on the job or at the job. Armand Wiggins broke character with him saying what he said. And also, you know, bringing up the Star Jones. I didn't know she signed them a cease and desist. So I was, you know, kind of listening to a couple of videos. And if she did that, and like I said, remember, she was brought up again by Miss Lunell. I don't even think Miss Miss Lunell knew about this. She was just doing her job. You know, so like I said, she mentioned... You know, um, Star Jones up by default. She didn't know. You understand? But still, TGIF, Fox Soul knew. 
they should have, but I forgot this was a, uh, this was a live. It wasn't pre-recorded, so they couldn't edit this out. You know what I'm saying? But still, like I said, if she do decides to sue TGIF, um, Fox, so it, it is what it is. She got grounds too. But then, like I said, Al Reynolds, his job is going to be at risk because they're not going to keep Al Reynolds on there, you know, because he's a liability, you know, because, uh, because of technicality, technicality because his ex-wife, Star Jones. But like I said, we just got to prevent from bringing her up. If we're talking about marriages, do not talk about nobody ex, you know, boyfriend, nobody ex-wife or ex None of that shouldn't come up. But that's all I got to say regarding this situation. Um, very, very, very um, interesting. You know, still messy. Claudia still dropping little F-bombs in people's chats. You know, I believe I heard that she had, um, you know, called him... Um, out his name, out. We're gonna say allegedly. I'm not sure, but I heard on a couple of videos. I'm not sure if it's true or not. Don't hold me to it. But that's all I gotta say, y'all. I will catch y'all later. And I hate to hold y'all for too long, but y'all know I like to break things down and really get into it. But that's all I gotta say. I thank y'all for watching. Now I'll catch y'all later.